Good morning everybody, hi, my name's Amy Sermon and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beaded brooch using some um, stitching techniques and this clever little finding which is called a shower brooch. So that's what we're going to do today. So we are live. Um, I'm going to let people sign up. We're starting to get people signing up now. So we'll just give people a minute to sign up and then we'll get started. I've got everything I need ready to go. Good morning. Okay. Great, good. That's it. We've got people starting to sign up brilliant good good i hope that it's a bit easier to find now i've got it on my my um page my shop page good uh, make sure my comments are on they are yes hello good morning pauline hi fantastic good okay so, as I have just said, and for those of you that have just joined us, what we are going to... Good morning, again. Uh, my name's Amy Sermon of the Oxford Bead Shop, or Amy Sermon School of Jewellery. And um, I am really enjoying doing my Facebook Live videos, and it's become part of my weekly routine now, which is fantastic. Good morning, Cathy. Um, yes, and so I'm just coming up with other ideas each week, things that I sell here in the shop so you can get all the materials from us or things that you might already have the materials for at home. Good morning, Jan. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is a beaded brooch like this. Quite a lot of work in there, isn't there? Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Isn't it pretty? Right, what we need for this project is the main thing that we need that you might not have at home, but you've probably got loads of beads if you're if we're all the same, which we are. We, you've probably got lots lying around. This is great for using up kind of oddments of beads. But what you will need is one of these. And this is called a shower brooch. You can see why. Shower part there, okay? And then you've got this piece here, which has got these little spikes on that are for setting all right so that's what we need in terms of kind of the material for the base then what we need is a pack of beads or beads that you might have at home so this brooch that i've made here this has been made from a pack of tiny um bead mixes that we've got the spring mix and it's good because for 170 you've got everything you need in there although i have added a couple of extras so i've added in a couple of extra pearls there and i've added in a couple of extra turquoise just to bulk it out a little bit really and to make it look a little bit more luxurious because of the pearls and things in there um so what I've chosen to work with today, I've got these mixes in all different colours. So we've got purple haze. That's the one that I'm going to choose that I've chosen to use today. We've got midnight, which is lovely. Look at that. I'm going to post all this up afterwards. Blue bronze, one of my favourites. Uh, we've got the, the goldy mix there as well. And then we've got a tutti frutti as well there. Okay, so we've got lots of those. We are going to get some more in. Unfortunately... I used to have a massive selection of these, but unfortunately we don't have any more and we can't get any more in, unfortunately. So um, we are going to see what we can get and make up some nice bead mixes for you all. So what I said I was going to use is the blue, uh, sorry, the purple haze mix. And if you look in these bags, there are lots of different beads in there. So I'm just going to tip those out. I've got size 11s. I've got size 8s. Can you see the purple? I'm sorry about that. I just knocked you all over. <laughs> all right. Okay, so you can see down here, uh, we've got all sorts of different beads. Now, the other thing that I've done is I've also added in some bigger beads that I've picked from my set of beads that I've got at the front of the shop. So I've got some little bicones, just kind of three of three different beads, really, just to give me something more to play with. And then I've got a bigger one as well. So this one... I've kind of, originally, I was going to set it 
on the brooch. So this all sort of came off to the side a little bit, but I think I am going to set it so they all dangle in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do with this, but I'm going to use this piece of fluorite in the middle, which I think will look nice. So I'm going to show you some little techniques of how you thread all this up and how you stitch this together. I suppose it's really a bead embroidery techniques that we're doing here. That's what we're going to be looking at. We need our thread that we're going to use. So I'm using Nymo. You need about two metres of it, but it really depends on how many beads you put on. So that's that's a very rough idea. You might need more. and You definitely wouldn't need less than that because it does take quite a lot. And it depends how much fringing you put on as well, which is this here is called the fringing. You need some needles. I'm using a size 10 beading needle, English beading needle. And the only other thing you need is a pair of scissors, really, in terms of material, in terms of tools um, and a bead mat. Bead mats are always great to use as well. OK, now what we do to get started is I'm going to take one of my little beads from the um, set that I've got here, take it down to the end of the thread and I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm knotting in. See, I've got my bead there. I'm knotting in a little bead oh, at the bottom there. Pull that round, it's twisting a little bit. There we go. There. And there. So you're just tying that into a knot. Just done a double knot. I'm going to do an extra knot for luck. There we go. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, I've got my little bead just knotted into the thread at the bottom. Now, what I can do. Is if I go up through one of these holes, so you see it's that you've got all the holes. So I'm going from the back, so the, the concave side is the back, going up to the front. And then when I pull that through, it holds it in place. Okay, because I've got my little bead there. So that bead sits on the back. I am going to snip that thread down just a little. All right, like so. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a stack stitch. And what a stack stitch is, is you if you take I'm going to take a little selection of beads. So I'm going to take some bigger ones. I'm going to take some smaller ones and I'm just going to create a little stack there. So I've just taken three beads on there. OK, so I've got a little I don't know, maybe that's a size um, eight a size 11 and then a size 6. But it doesn't matter, you can use anything. Take it all the way down to here and look how that sits on the top. Can you see that? Then I'm going to take a tiny bead, take that down, but rather than going back through that bead, I leave that one and I go back through the others that I've just put on and back through the same hole and watch what happens. So that bead that we've just put on becomes, let's just pull it all up like that and pull that down. So that little bead that we've just put on becomes what's called a stopper bead and that will stop all of those beads from coming off. There we go. That was just fitting in that hole. Hopefully that won't come out. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go no, no, I think that'll be fine. I was just worried because, see, well, I've chosen a really tiny bead and actually the whole size of that bead is, isn't that small. So it has gone right inside the bead, but I don't think it's going to come out. And there's our little stack. Now, I could do it really simple and literally just do one bead on there. So let's just take one of these and then pick up another. Take them all the way down to the bottom go around that top bead. So I'm not going through this little bead, but I'm going through the other one that I put on. And so what I'm doing again is I'm creating a stopper bead. What can be really tricky when you're doing this is the cord getting all twisted up around the other beads that you've got on. But there we go. And we just start building it up like that. I'm gonna do another one here. So let's put one of these on. You can just do them really tiny as well. They don't have to, they don't have to be a lot. You can just kind of fill it with little tiny sections of beads. 
Uh, just to say as well, I said that we needed about um, two meters of thread, but actually what I've threaded up is only a meter because otherwise what can happen is you can get really tangled up. So I've threaded up a meter and then what I'll do is I'll need to thread some more onto my needle later. There we go. Look, you see how it's all building up. OK, now what I would suggest to do, because it can be quite difficult just kind of starting on one side and going down to the other. So what I would suggest to do is take your bigger ones or take the more prominent beads that you've got and think about where you want those positioned first. So I might just go ahead and put one of these bigger ones kind of towards this end a little bit more. I've actually got a, a knot in my there I think I'm going to be able to get away with it in my thread I think so if you do get a knot I find using your needle to try and undo it but if you damage your cord too much in the process or your thread too much in the process just take it off and start again Okay, so I'm going to put this bigger one on over here. Let's put a nice little bright pink one at the end. And then I'm going to go around the pink, back through that big one and back through the same hole that the thread's coming through. And I'm going to position it there. I'm going to have all my fringing coming from the bottom here. So I'm going to have the fringing coming down here. So now I want to, I'm going to add one of these bigger ones and I'm going to pop it over here. So you see all I'm doing, you could do yourself a little sketch if you wanted to. But all I'm doing here is I'm just deciding where I want the bigger, more prominent beads to go. And then I can fill in with all the smaller ones around it. So I'm going to pop that one there like that. Make sure everything's staying nice and tight. So give everything a little tug. Keep it all nice and tight. So you see, I'm just starting to do that. All right. And my fringing's going to come from the bottom, like I said. So let's put another bigger one on just here. So keep that pulled tight. Let's put one of these little glass pearls on. And then we'll put another little bright coloured, or let's put one of those little crystally ones on underneath. Okay. And then back through the big bead, back through the hot, same hole in the shower part, and pull that through. There we go. Okay, so you see what I'm doing there? I'm just building up where I'm going to put the bigger ones. And then I can fill in all these little ones around it. All right, now let's go down to the bottom. So what I would try to do is rather than just skipping around on the back like that, um, try and put some little beads in to kind of get you down to the other side. So I'm here at the moment. So I want to work my way down to this point. So I am going to go into there, pick up a couple of beads, and add a little section in on my way down. I'm not gonna keep having big long lines of open thread on the back, because one, it means you'll end up using a lot more thread, but also I think it's good to, from a kind of a strength point of view with it, for it all to be woven in. Okay, so let's put a few more on. So I'm just picking up two beads at a time at the moment, just so I can get these spaces around these bigger beads filled because it's depending on the size of your bead it might take up a few kind of holes really all right now let's get down to here and then from here i'm going to put a st uh, one of these fringing i'm sure how to do this fringing see these okay so what we're doing exactly the same again but we're just going bigger with our beads so, or, or longer, I should say, not bigger. We're going longer with our beads. So I'm just going to put a little section of these on all the way down. Pop that onto there. I think I want this one a little bit longer. I'm going to put this nice big one, this briolet. So it's top drilled. So the hole's running through the top like that. So let's put another one on there. And now what I'm going to do here is... Because I've got the hole running through here, can you see that? I've got this section at the side. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one, two, three, four. So I've got my section here that, that it's hanging from. I've picked up four little beads. I'm going through the big briolette. I'm going to pick up another four of the same beads. Two, three, four. And what will happen is if I then take my thread through all of this, these beads that are creating the drop, take that all the way through. See if I can do it in one go. There we go. Okay. And then look what happens to this bead at the bottom. Look. Can you see how I've created a little triangle above the bead with beads? So much nicer than having thread showing. So you create a little triangle by taking, having a, a section of beads, your briolet, and then a section of beads up the other side. And then you go back through all of those beads. Now you can make those as long as you like. So you can just play around with making them as long as you like there. So you see, I've got these ones that are a little bit longer and then I've sort of tapered them off up to the side there, which is quite nice to do. And the same again, you go back through the hole in the shower part. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna anchor it in by just putting a little one to the side of it or just above it, just to kind of get it anchored in place really. The other little tip when you're doing this is as you're working on it, hold the threads at the back. You see how I'm doing that? I'm pinching it like this and I'm holding it at the back because if you don't, it just all starts to kind of get a little bit loose. So by doing that, it just holds it in place. Oh, I've just got that caught around there. That's, a, that's really something you've got to be careful of. You've really got to make sure that when you're using these, that it doesn't get caught around the other beadwork. And that's the hardest part of it, actually, because you could imagine when you've got all of those beads on and you're getting near the end, there's so much for it all to kind of get caught around. So just be careful of that. You see, and by doing that, I've now been able to pull that up and there's that little drop. That's quite a nice heavy one, actually, because it's a big semi-precious stone. So let's do another fringe. So this time I'm going to drop one of these off, I think. So make up a little section again. I'm going to go with all of these sorts of different colours and some of these bright pinks. There's lots of little ones to play with here. Check your length. Check that you're happy with the length of it. Remembering that you've got that to go on as well. I think that's about right, actually. So that's going to finish just above that other bigger bead. Now I need a slightly bigger bead to go on the end here. So again, I put a small bead on. Uh, size 11, I think that is. Back through that big bead. Back through all the little ones. I'm holding them. I find it easier if I hold them between my finger and thumb like that. Pull it all the way up. Lay it down on your bead mat. Hold the big bead at the bottom here, look. And then you can pull them all up through. There. Hold it like that. Pull it all the way up. See, it makes it easier if you just do that. Hold it at the bottom. And then go back through that hole. So now I'm going to put this pressure on the back there so it holds it in place while I get another little bead on. I'm going to go just above it, just above it there. So I would say that this is about a two hour project, maybe more, maybe two and a half hours. I did that one last night um, in a probably a about an hour and a half but, uh, and that's being used to doing them so if you're not used to doing it maybe give yourself a little bit longer but it's a really nice project to do okay let's get a couple more on just to show you how it's all gonna work let's do that 
I'm going to put a little one of these little ones on here. Oops. Oh, there it goes. I'll pick that up later. Okay, and then a little stopper bead at the bottom. Take that down. And then if we lift that up, I'm going to go through the big one. See that? Through all those little ones that I've just put on and out the back. And then just to make it a bit easier, pop it down onto the table and pull everything through. And there I've got another little fringe section. So I can just keep going with this. Just keep going and just fill it. Just fill it all over. So the technique is place down your bigger beads so it gives you something to kind of work around and then you're just filling it up and if you don't like it you can take it off always easier to take your needle off and then pull it off rather than trying to thread back through um, so this is called a stacking stitch and this is called fringing but they look great don't they look at that looks there's so much work in there but what a fabulous brooch or on a bag or something Okay, now the other thing that we'd need to do once we've finished it off is we need to knot the thread in. Now, all I do is I literally just use, so that's the back, that's what the back looks like. You see the thread on there? So what I've done there is I've gone through it. Um, let's have a little look there. Oh yeah, look, so that's got all those little beads on there going through. Um, okay, so when I... Um, when I, what was I saying? Knotting, sorry. So when I knot the back, I'm just going to use these threads here and go underneath the thread, create a knot and pull it tight. Do that a few times, work your way around the back a few times um, and then you can cut it off. And when you start again, if you need, when you need to put your new thread in, you're going to put one of these little stopper beads on the back again because they work really well for that. Once you've completed what you want to do, then we need to put this back on. And you remember I said that you've got those little spikes there and that's what we use to set it. So what you will need for this is a pair of chain nose pliers or something that you can use to bend it over. I find chain nose pliers the best to use really. Be aware of where your bar is on the back and where you want the bottom to be. And then if you put that into position there, I'm happy with that. That's going to sit like that. And there's my little tooth. It's like a little tooth, okay? And what we do is we take our pliers, make sure you don't damage the back. So what you could do, in fact, is let's take a little tissue or stick on a piece of masking tape and just hold it onto the back. Because so, otherwise, if you do this with your pliers, you could damage the back of it. And that will just support it while you then take your pair of chain nose pliers and bend it. Do you see what I did there? So I'm just, let me show you on another. So I'm just taking my pliers around the edge. My tooth is here on this and it's sitting underneath this top part of the plier there and I'm just bending it down gently. It's going on this side. So hold it there. See I'm bending. See what I'm doing? And then I squeeze it down. There we go. And then one more here over this side. So there's four on the back to do. Make sure it's really squeezed down. And there we go. Now that's all set. Okay. So you can see that um, it these there's no I haven't gone on top of the beads there's no beads in the way when I've pushed this top section down it's all completely filled I've got my nice fringing at the bottom we're all complete so um one pack of beads so like this pack of the spring beads that's all I've got left so a whole bag will do one project, but it is nice to have a few bigger ones amongst it as well. The shower parts, so for the complete this, the front and the back together is £2.50. 
and then the beads are one pound seventeen i've got lots of others so i can send these out to you or you can you can now come in the shop and have a little look around which is lovely and uh, we've got the thread and we've got the needles but i'm going to put a post up now for you to explain all of the materials and to put prices and things up as well okay thanks for joining me i hope you liked it all right take care bye